And on to video 4. So if you've read recipe 3, or watched recipe 3, we've created a very simple piece of code which loads in a text file and writes one from what we've written on the screen. Now how we're going to extend this is to actually allow us to put in any text and any text file. For this we need a file open dialog box. So here's our open file dialog. And now we're going to change how we actually use the read text file. First of all, our default file name on open file dialog, we don't want to be open file dialog 1, so I'm going to clear that. I can apply a filter to the file dialog so it will only show text files. To do this, I'm going to set my filter to only include files that are called text. The bar straight line is the button next to the left shift. And I'm also going to put in the ability to have all files the wildcard as it's called filter for that is star dot star. A star means anything. So if you wanted just text files that start with the word tx, you could actually have tx star dot text and it would only show files that begin with tx. The initial directory we can set if we wish, otherwise it will automatically be my documents. We can put a title on our dialog as well. In this case I'm going to make it say open text file. I can check that the file actually exists, which is important, and check that the path exists as well. The path is the list of folders. So, how do we put Open File Dialog 1 into reading on our text file? Well, we're going to use an if statement. We show the dialog first on the screen, and we check that the person has actually pressed OK at the end. If they pressed OK, then we're going to read in the text file. Now instead of being test.txt that we've just asked for, we can actually use the file name that the person has typed in. We then read it in and close it. So with just a few changes to the code, it becomes a very much more professional looking program. I read the text file, it loads up. In this case it's actually started in my debug directory. And there it is. Now I want to do the same thing when writing text files. I actually want a save file dialog. So I'm going to double click on that to bring that one in as well. Again, the filter on this is going to have to be a text file. I'm not going to allow them to put in any other type of file. And I can even say on here that I can automatically add the extension. So if they don't type in the .txt, it will put it in for us. Title on this one is save text as dot dot dot. So how do we do that on the right text file? Simple, in the same way as we did the other one. Save file dialog one show dialog, that brings it up on the screen and then we can see what they've actually pressed as the dialog result. If they pressed OK, we then write the file in. Again, we need to change the stream writer object now to the save file dialog file name that they've typed in write it out and close it. We can also, on the save file dialog, prompt if it's going to be a new, fi uh, new file. We can prompt if it's going to be an overwrite. The most important one here is the overwrite prompt. So, what will happen if we try and overwrite a file? Let's find out. I'm going to read my text file in. Again, it's going to load up test.txt. Here we go. And I can write it and it asks me to save the text as. If I want to save it over text, it warns me. Do I want to replace it? If I say no, I can then change the text file name, text2, and save. This is going in text1. If I write this now into text1, I can prove therefore that each one is different. Test2 looks like that. Read test file test looks like that.